So yeah, now that we know that's up, can, you could pull, you could pull down the, uh, you could put it back to program or. She ready? Just give us a thumbs okay. up. There, she's ready. Okay, welcome to the City of Maplewood Heritage Preservation Commission. This is Thursday, July 13th at 7 p.m. Welcome all. Uh, first uh, roll call, and I'll call the roll here. Uh, Cardinals here. Curry? Yep, I'm here. Gaspar? Here. Kern? Here. Hughes? Here. And uh, Ms. Koski is not here. She's not feeling well, apparently. So we'll move on to the approval of the agenda. Are there any changes to the agenda? Anyone? Could we add under uh, new business the uh, Preserve Minnesota Conference that will be coming up the end of September? In yes. Mankato? Yes. Okay. Mankato. Okay, and that'll be number two. And then I'd like to add uh, number three, records retention schedule. Is there anything number else four to be would added? be uh, the Tower, Ramsey County Poor Farm update on, or does anybody have an update on that? It's still there. Yeah, I know. But somebody was supposed to go and check to see what we could do to extend it to the National Registry. Okay, well, we can, do, we can talk about that. Is there anything else to be added? Okay, is there a motion to approve the agenda? I so, make a motion to approve the agenda. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. We have a approval of the agenda. All in favor, say aye. 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 And uh, others, that's unanimous. Okay, we'll move on to approval of the minutes as presented. Any changes to the minutes? There's a lot of changes to that minutes. The whole front part of the meeting where M Mr. Hughes got up and said, we're gonna ch put all new uh, officers in to he made, we voted, and according to, we operate under Robert's Rules of Order. The chairman should have been voted one, and then the second vote should have been the vice chair, and, and also on the thing, it said that Mr. Hughes approved appointment of Bob Cardinal, which when you have an election, you don't appoint, you're elected. Second, at the end of the meeting, when they ended everything, they had another meeting after the meeting, and that's against uh, open meeting law when they were picking somebody to help Laura on uh, that. That should have been in the meeting itself. Okay, that can be added to the minutes for Thursday, May 11th, 2023. Anything else? Okay, we'll, we'll uh, suspend uh, voting on the minutes. We'll address that at the next meeting. Okay, we'll move on to new business. Number one, St. Paul Monastery and Benedictine Center. Joel. So in your packet, there is our... Um, Mayor had the opportunity to visit and be part of the 75th anniversary of the monastery. On June 22nd, she declared the following proclamation or issued the following proclamation. Uh, it's in your packet. I don't know if anyone wants to read it out loud. Uh, otherwise, uh, the two big things that came out of there were sort of the history of the center and how important it's been to Maplewood. They've shared their publications with us 
I'm happy to pass them around or leave them up here for folks to look at during the meeting or after the meeting. All right, thank you. We also had planned Richard. to put the monastery on our historic places. Okay. Uh, and they were gonna do some work there and I, they probably are done that we probably should approach them to put it on the historic places in Maplewood. Yeah, that'd be appropriate after uh, recognizing them for for all those years, 75 years, they should be recognized. Yeah, good. I'm almost there. Okay. All right, that's number one. John, what? did you have anything? No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number two, preserve Minnesota Conference and Mankato in September. Barbara, did you want to I, mention that? Or? I could just mention no. this. Barbara had asked me to mention this. Um, <laughs> so last year, we attended the preserve, the three of us, uh, myself, um, Commissioner Kern and Chair Cardinal uh, attended the Preserve Minnesota Conference. By uh, statute, at least one person who's on this commission has to uh, attend that conference. Last year, we were fortunate enough to get three um, scholarships that helped cover the costs for the most part of that, of, of, um, of us attending the conference. Um, in order to kind of be prepared for it this year and apply for a uh, grant or scholarship this year, I'm just trying to garner who might be interested in attending from this commission. Uh, Could we put all our names in and then see how many slots we can get? Um, I, I would recommend that maybe we do two. Oh, okay. And then go from there. Okay. Uh, just so everybody, yeah. I don't think I'd be able to with the dog and what have you that I have. I'd have to take the dog. They wouldn't want that down there. Okay, all right. What were the dates again, Joe? So the dates are, bring it up. It is at the end of September. Give me one second here. It's, yeah, Preserve Minnesota. It's in Mankato, Minnesota, uh, September 27th through 29th. Uh, does anybody feel they want to go? Barbara? Okay. I'm just waiting for anybody else to, to jump in, but yes. Okay, I, I, and I'll, I'll also put in John. Oh. David? Um, yeah. Okay, and then um, Laura, we'll know. I uh, think Laura goes, I, I can double check with Laura, but I think because of her day job, she's also able to go because of her day job. Good. So if she's able to go that route, we could, we, I will, I'll discuss with her which option she wants to go with. And Joe, can you go? Uh, d just depends. Um, I may or may not be around that weekend, but if, if at least one of us goes, then we fulfilled our obligation. Okay, yep, it's uh, kind of a requirement, isn't it? Yeah, at least one person from the commission has, yep. to, has to attend. Okay, good. All right, that's number two. We'll move on to uh, un under new business records retention schedule. Joe, do you wanna start that out and then I'll pipe in? Yeah, so, uh, can Chair Cardinal had requested that we um, take a look at the Minnesota State and the City of Maplewood retention schedule. So sort of how long do we have to retain a various number of documents? Uh, the actual retention schedule we adopted was from, um, so basically what happens is the City of Maplewood essentially adopted what mirrors the state. So. I had given you the one copy of what the city's retention record is because it covers everything the state requires us to cover. Uh, as you can see, there's a hard copy, and as I mentioned in the email earlier, uh, I went through and tried to highlight the types of documents that, that this commission would be most interested in. Uh, that hard copy is in the commissioner or chair cardinal's hands. So if you're interested more in that, I'd be happy to let you know. I will tell you that while this is a great discussion for us to have, the city clerk is the repositor and sort of oversees the records. And most of the, re in addition to that, uh, most of the records that concern this commission are held within the uh, community development department, both of which are outside the purview of, of me as liaison, but I'm happy to, if there's any specifics you need more, I'm happy to coordinate with them. and get that information for you. Okay, any any comments or I'll, I'll uh, dig in. 
David? So then any of the old records that any of us have should be turned into the city clerks? Well, if you, so if it's a record that was, essentially if it's a record that was generated by the city, we, I have a copy of it. If it was generated on behalf of the city outside, that's a little different, but I have most of the records. So if there's a record you've created as a member of the commission, if you send it my way, I'll make sure it gets to the right spot. Okay, because I think there was a question a few meetings ago about some of the records maybe not have, having been filed with the clerk and you know people had them in their personal. So, so basically what it is, and, and I could double check with <clears throat> IT tomorrow, but once someone, we were, there was a concern that someone had left, all of the records they had should have been kept in their in their drive and if the and so if the records were in that person's uh basically not, not hard drive but it's it's each of us at the city gets what's called a p drive it's our personal drive that when we're doing work on behalf of the city we save it to that drive and that drive is then stored both on the cloud and it's stored on our hard server so the one person who was the two liaisons ago uh most of the information as far as the minutes, the agendas, all of that information was, is now in the hands of the city, has always been in the hands of the city clerk. Go ahead. Yeah. I've been saving the version since I've been on here, the, uh, the agenda. Yeah. I went through my stuff. I got a pile that big. So you have copies of it. Yes, we, by, yes <laughs> by state statute, we have to hold, I believe, it, if, if you want to double check the record, I believe we have to hold agendas uh, for quite some time, if not permanently. Okay. Sorry. So yeah, you don't ha you don't ever have to worry about if I generate it and I email it to you. If you want to keep it for your records, great. If you want to get rid of it, great. Because we have the the city official version of the copy. Okay, so this goes back about seven eight years. Yeah, yeah. You could you you. I mean, if you want to keep them for your records, no, great. But the city has them. Yeah. John, I have about twenty some when they started this commission. Awesome. Okay. Very good. All right. Um, thank you for doing that, Joe. I want to get on record that we've addressed that. Um, the state um, tells us we have to do that, and I did look at uh, the state, and they. I'm going to just briefly read these um, bullet points. Record retention, record retention schedules. What is record retention? What is record retention schedule? Are record retention schedules required by law? The answer is yes. How do I find out if our city has record retention schedule? Uh, what if our city does not have record retention schedule? We now know that uh, staff has indicated that that's the case. How do I get my record retention schedule approved? How do I use record retention schedule? Are there any legal guidelines that control the length of the time records must be kept? And that's yes. And that, uh, I guess, uh, and then a couple others. Are there specific guidelines about the record retention uh, records, special records? Yes, there's guidelines. Uh, city tries to save space um, for record retention management and City retains records in electronic form, that's yes. Uh, city has changed the records we keep and the format in which we keep the records. What, which sh what should we do? We, the records are kept. Um, and then how long must city keep records? How long must the city keep records for employees, transfers? How long must the city keep uh, cumulative records, and the answer is Joe indicated, our staff person, yes. And then how do we use our record retention schedule when we receive data requests from individual or another entity? Um, now we know that we can find that. And in the past, we've had the secretary or the uh, clerk find some information for us. So uh, and then the last couple are... Uh, do I have to document these records? Yes. Uh, do we have record retention data practices? Yes. And you can contact the city for any assistance there. Just, so, and just to, so everybody's at ease, we have a full-time person dedicated to 
handling records requests. We get quite a few what are called Chapter 13 requests a week on a wide variety of issues. And it is her, and she, we have a full-time person dedicated in the city clerk's office to retrieving and reproducing records for members of the public. Okay, thank you, Joe. Appreciate that. Okay, and then number four, Ramsey County Public uh, Water Tower up at the farm there. Richard, did you want to comment on that? I don't know. I don't know where it's sta I see it's still up there, but I see they had a proposed development sign up there yes. for the city. So just, um, and you could, what I would suggest is, it, again, in the record, Monday night's council meeting, this past Monday night's council meeting, July the 10th, they talked about the development New Way, and it's supposed to be a, um, a rehabilitation facility that's going in there. The city had approved uh, some preliminary plans for that facility. Um, that is connected to, that's not connected to the poor farm and barn, that's the other parcel that is, that is located by that facility. So it's the old Ramsey County Senior Care Center is being repurposed. So the county is selling it to this organization called New Way, which is a nonprofit. Um, and it's, it's, a land, it's a, basically a land, tran not land transfer, but a land sale from the county to New Way. And the city, because it's in our city, the city controls zoning in there. So that was, if you go to back and watch Monday night's council meeting, you could get caught up on what's happening there. As far as the tower, I have not heard. Gene Kruger from the county is the one who's in charge of their property management and facilities. I have not heard anything more from them about uh, a desire to, do, to go which way or the other on the tower. What about the state historical mark? Coop, uh, the to Mark see if we can annex that tower. Michael? Michael Coop. Yeah. So what we'd have to do, again, this is more uh, Commissioner Kosky's lane, but what she had suggested is to see if by taking the tower down, if it would detract from the overall historic value of the rest of the, or the parcel that is historic. So would, by taking, essentially by taking that down, would it then invalidate in some way the uh, poor farm barn? And I don't know what the answer to that well, is. The thing is that water tower supplied the water to the barn. And before they put the new uh, nursing home up there, they had the old one, plus they had a, resident house that they moved down on Kennard Street. Okay. So it's somewhat all connected, but is it connected? Okay. Is that it? Is that it? We'll keep an eye on that water tower. They would have to apply for, getting back, getting to the next piece, they would have to apply for a demo permit to take it down. So that's the one piece we could keep, keep an eye on is to see where they are with that. Because I know how they... They'll, they'll give the permit before they, uh, and tear it down before we get it. And, oh, we were supposed to save that. Well, thanks for bringing our attention. We'll be watching. Every time we drive by, we know it's Well, secure. it's a, I've been told it's been a landmark by other people Good. in the city. Right. It is, a la I mean, lots of things are landmarks. Is it a historic landmark? Is it legally protected landmark? Yeah, because you go up prosperity to the poor farm. All right, great. So, Richard, you might want to recruit some of those people to go put a bug in the city's ear about doing that. Yeah. Hmm. Citizens groups can get a lot more done than we can because obviously they vote for the members of the council. So when people approach you like that, tell them to go talk to the, the city council about it. Well, you know what they would, what people outside say about the council, and I'm not going to say anything more about it. Okay, let's move on to unfinished business. Uh, number one, demo applications. So right now, I, to my knowledge, we have no demo applications. Wonderful. Um, and then item number two is Commissioner Kosky. She had emailed me today and said at this point, um, 
everything that she's worked on is status quo. She's had she's kind of at a, at a good stopping point. But then she had mentioned that uh, in conversations with folks from the Minnesota Era, his, Area Historical Society to do a little further research, they had suggested hanging on because the Minnesota Area Historical Society actually has that part of the building where the records are stored under construction right now. So it was advised to her as let the construction finish and then it would be better for folks to go in there and do the work, more habitable or hospitable uh, condition for folks to go in and do the work. So that's where we are at that. Okay, and that is referring to mapping potentially historic structures. Okay. Yes, and then everyone, I mean, I'm willing to walk people through individually, but um, at the last meeting we had in May, Commissioner Koski had sent over a variety of, of documents that if you have access to Google Earth, you could basically upload her documents to Google Earth and scan and, and scan everything on a map. So you could you don't need her software. I mean, you need her software to get the full um, ability of what she's cataloged, but just to see where stuff is on the map and click individual properties on the map, it's just a simple plug in to uh, Google Earth, and most of us have that on our laptops. Okay, any other questions? And actually, David? Richard, that was the conversation we had that you mentioned that was a meeting after the meeting. It was just talking about the software that she had, and those of us that had Google Earth were asking how we could acquire it. So it wasn't a closed meeting outside of a meeting. It was a discussion between colleagues about using Google Earth with what she had developed. She could have put it, you could have put it. She did mention it. All of us heard she it. She did mention it at the end of the meeting that she had access to this and anybody who wanted to talk about the Google Earth asked if anybody used Google Earth and a couple of us said yes. So then she just kind of showed it to us. That, it was not a closed meeting. It was a discussion amongst colleagues about something we had talked about in the meeting. And I'm sure she was planning on bringing it back tonight and sharing it with everybody else. Okay, well, we can ask her to bring it next month. Okay, uh, move on to visitor presentations, Maplewood Area Historical Society update. TJ. Oh, we got PJ in here too. Good evening, uh, Chair Cardinal, Commissioners, uh, Mr. Sheeran. Thanks for having me tonight. Um, it's been a busy month since uh, we saw each other last, and uh, it's been really exciting over at the Historical Society. Uh, our internship program kicked off this year, so uh, we have three amazing interns that we were able to bring on this year, Kylie Knutson, Nora DeRege, Brett Sigurdsson, and then we have brought back one of our interns from last year, Kara uh, McGowan, who is serving as a second year fellow this year. So that's an extremely exciting move on the part of the Historical Society to make sure that we are professionalizing and moving in a professional direction, uh, which is a, a, a great, um, I think, step towards uh, getting us to where we need to be to be this regional museum that we talk about, or I talk about rather, almost every month. So uh, it's, a, it's an exciting thing. They've been working hard on looking at a lot of our collections. Uh, we, we are doing an exhibit, or not an exhibit, um, a program with all of our textiles. We're re-inventorying uh, and cataloging all of our textiles that have been scattered across the 12 historic structures of, of the Bruin Troop Heritage Farm. We brought them back into one place and assessing what we need to keep, what uh, is extremely valuable and we need uh, advanced storage for, and those things that perhaps we might not need to keep. Uh, so that's been one of the projects we've been working on. We've been working on some um, communications projects with social media. Uh, the interns have been supplying updates to a blog, so if you want to see what they're all up to, you can check out our blog at maplewoodmuseum.org and, uh, and read both the good and the bad of being an intern at a small museum. Um, and then also, kind of one of the bigger things we're working on right now, uh, as uh, was mentioned just a little bit ago, we are in the process of renovating our collection storage space. So our collection storage space is currently spread in several locations across the various buildings of the uh, museum, but uh, the majority of that is in the basement of the farmhouse. 
Best practices is not to have collection storage space in a basement. Uh, however, it's a fairly new basement. It's 23 years old, so you know it's not that it was a 130-year-old farm basement. Uh, but we are looking at updating that now. 20 years later, it's it's worth looking at updating. So we're reconfiguring. Uh, we're relooking at uh, more professional storage pieces for our collections because we do have pretty amazing collections at the Maplewood Area Historical Society, about 150,000 pieces at this point in time. Um, and so one of the projects we're working on with that is the redesign of our collection space um, and then also a new collections management software which is called Collective Access, uh, which we're working on taking all of the uh, Lilly publication photos from 1978 up until the closing uh, several years ago and getting those uh, cataloged. Now that's 130,000 images. That'll take us um, the next 20 years to get that done. But we're working on it. We've started that process, so that's uh, an exciting thing. Uh, we're still looking at trying to recover some uh, collections pieces which went missing that were in our possession and uh, have been uh, off-site. We're trying to recoup those and get those back. So we're working with local authorities to make sure that we can get those pieces back into our collections. As we mentioned last time, it's important to make sure that um, those documents and uh, collections pieces we have are in the right places and are not sitting in our basements or our dens or our garages at home. Um, we had our first um, summer tea, which was on World War II fashion. We had an amazing uh, historian come out, uh, Jessica Seigen, who did a great program on World War II fashion. I think one of the things that really made me uh, kind of be like, oh, wow, that's really interesting, is if you think about World War II fashion, we're thinking about, uh, on, on women, uh, bright red lipstick, kind of for the first time. And that was, uh, Jessica informed us, because Hitler hated makeup on women. So American women decided they were going to make themselves up and use bright red lipstick. Uh, and so that was one of those interesting things we learned from that uh, discussion as well. And uh, that was a really well-attended um, uh, event. Um, we had our 80s prom, which was a blast. It was a lot of fun. Um, so I know Mr. Sheeran was there, and it was a, a great time had by all. It was our first 80s prom fundraiser. We'll do another one next year. Uh, so we made uh, a good return on that as well. Our big red farmer's markets have been in full swing. So if you haven't been out to a farmer's market, Sunday's 9 to 1, I encourage you to come on out, check us out. Some fun stuff going on, some great local vendors, uh, local vendors right from Maplewood, uh, North St. Paul, you know, the local area, it's really great. Uh, we just started, so um, I don't know if you can see my pants are covered in flowers, flower today, because uh, we just completed our first week of uh, farm camp for first through third graders. We had 33 students on the farm this week, and uh, that's the largest camp we've ever had. Now, I designed this camp nine years ago, and was really proud of it, and we've been able to update it and expand it and scale it up. So by the end of this uh, um, field trip season, this, this summer camp season, we'll see about 200 students on the museum premises going through camp. Um, we heard amazing feedback from parents talking about how this was their kids' favorite camp. It was the best camp ever. It was uh, camps. We've got students coming back three years in a row now. Um, and how it beats a lot of other camps. And then there were some tears uh, from students leaving today, so that always, you know, as sad as that is, is a good, a good thing that they don't want to leave camp. Uh, during camp, farm to table camp, uh, we talk about the history of, of in particular, dairy farming in uh, the Maplewood area. So the uh, Schroeder Farm and uh, the Bruin Troop Farm as two major dairy farms we can talk about. We uh, deal a lot with dairy. We make cheese and butter and we make bread. We make salsa and talk about where food comes from and how far food travels and what we can grow in Minnesota and what we can't grow in Minnesota. And then we just have a great time with arts, crafts, games, and a lot of uh, exploration of the Bruin Troop Heritage Farm. So that's, that's really great. Uh, we have another uh, farm to table camp coming up next week. Uh, July 17th through 20th, that is uh, nearly filled. I think we have one spot open, so if anyone out there knows of any first through third graders who might want to spend a great week with us, uh, do that. We have our fourth through sixth grade uh, farm to table camp on July 24th through 27th, and then we have our arts on the farm camp uh, for grades four through six, August 7th through 10th. 
And then we have our culinary camp for ages 12 through 16, August 14th through 17th. And we have our Hmong language and culture camp, our award-winning Hmong language and culture camp uh, for grades three through seven, August 7th through 10th. So those are uh, some pretty exciting things. And we actually have a video tonight of uh, this week's camp, so I don't know if we can show that. There's no sound to it, but I'll walk you through this video to show you some highlights of, uh, of our campers. So one of the things we do is we make diaries uh, and we keep a diary and then we explore our exhibits as well, which are exciting, super exciting. Let's see here. Do a lot of exploration of plants. Talking about dairy farming. We explore uh, the Gladstone fire exhibit and then we milk Daisy the cow, mm -hmm. which is a highlight. So we all get a chance to milk Daisy. That's half of our kids. We make salsa, so we talk about what can be grown in Minnesota and what can't. And we make butter. Here they're listening for the butter to break. So you can, you're gonna watch them listen here. Can you hear? <laughs> the highlight, butter making. Uh, we do some garden work. We don't do a lot of hard work, but we do some garden work. We play some games. Um, we play in some water, some more garden work. Nature walks out on the prairie. Uh, we deal with compost, so we have the students also save up compost for a week, and they bring it, and we get to um, pitch compost and make compost for the gardens here. So we work with pitchforks, which seem really dangerous for first and, and third graders, but uh, we talk about how to use them appropriately. We bake bread. That's a highlight. So every student gets to leave with an artisan loaf. We make, uh, do flower arranging. And then we have a graduation where um, parents get to come. So today we had over 100 folks on the farm and our uh, campers got to play tour guide and we do some um, hay rides and a little program. Uh, but that's what we've been up to this week. And we've got four more weeks of this. So uh, we're excited to continue this amazing program that is really growing and uh, continuing to provide our mission of bringing history to the local community. We had a lot of uh, local Maplewood students, uh, and so a lot of parents talking about, asking questions about uh, funding from the city, and so we were able to say that we received uh, some funding from the city this year through the grants, uh, charitable gambling grant to help fund this camp. So that was a great thing as well, to be able to support, uh, show support from the city. So that was, uh, really great. Um, one last thing before I uh, turn it over for questions, if we have any, is we've also been nominated in White Bear Press's Best Of in six categories. So if you all could get online and vote for us in White Bear's Best Of, we were, we were nominated for Best Festival for St. Nicholas Tog, uh, Best Historic Spot, Best Scenic Spot, Best Outdoor Event for the Big Red Barn Farmer's Market. Best Website, which I have to give a shout out to Brittany Johnson, who is our web developer here. So she does a beautiful website. If you haven't been on our website, it's uh, maplewoodmuseum.org, and it's a really beautiful website. Uh, and then Best Place to Get Married. So uh, get on there and vote for us, and uh, maybe we can win some Best of White Bear down here in Maplewood. I think that would be pretty fun. So uh, that's what I've got for you all. I would open the floor up to questions if... Uh, Sure, Cardinal, you'd like to Okay, does anybody him? have any comments or questions? Richard? I was out there on what was it, Sunday. It looked good. They had two horses, or ponies, I would call them. There, we had one. there was one. There was one? There was I, just one. I thought I It saw might have it. seemed like two, but there was one, yeah. Okay. They were a little bit small for me. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they were good. Uh, the other question is, when do we? When do the members get their member meeting or uh, letters? So they, annual we meeting? haven't. I haven't seen a a letter of activities or anything come from the society. Plus, we have. There's supposed to be a annual membership mm -hmm. meeting. 
Yeah, um, so the annual meeting is scheduled for the 20th. So as you are a former board member, you're well aware that we, we give 30-day notice for that. So you should be receiving that shortly, but it has not gone out yet because we still have our 30 days from uh, August 20th to have our annual meeting. Uh, so we're wrapping up some stuff. We have our, uh, our July uh, board meeting uh, this coming Monday. So we want to make sure we finalize some things before we send that out to the membership. Um, I would encourage you to check your spam mail because we have been sending out emails. So if you haven't been getting emails, go ahead and check your spam mail. And if you haven't uh, been receiving anything from there and you can't find it in spam, reach out to me and let me know because I'd be happy yeah, to help I you. Yeah, I would receive anything. All right, then check your spam mail. Okay, anybody else? Anything? Well, I've got a few things. Yeah. Uh, First off, I, I received several calls about Maplewood Area Historical Society, okay? The first thing was, what, and the, none of these people are in this room. Uh, the first thing was what Richard mentioned about a newsletter. There hasn't been any newsletter in I don't know how long. But. No, so we've talked about this, and even, uh, uh, Bob, when you were on the board, we talked about how the investment in having a newsletter go out to 33 people uh, wasn't worth the investment of the 5,000 people that we reach on social media or via our email. So, you know, that's been a discussion that happened a year and a half ago. Yeah. Um, I'd love to bring a newsletter back. We just don't have the resources to do that right now. And so focusing on reaching 5,000 people uh, as opposed to the 33 that we're on, that we're wanting a newsletter, you know, you balance that out. As an executive director, I made that choice. Okay, that's number one. Uh, there were several changes with the Maplewood Area Historical Society as far as board members, and I was told that there's three board members. Mm -hmm. I know when I served a couple of terms, maybe six, eight, ten years, we had ten members yep. on the board. Um, that's a great question, and I think a lot were, uh, you know, the current board uh, is made up of folks that we made sure we're invested in moving the organization forward, and there were board members that we had to have serious conversations about conflicts of interest and about whether or not they were able to support the organization at the level that we needed board members to, both from an ethical and a legal standpoint, and so those conversations were had. They were not easy conversations to have, but uh, to move the organization forward and to make sure that we maintain our 501c3 status which we need, we had to ask board members to make tough choices about staying or going. And so we are currently at three board members and we have an election coming up on August 20th. Okay, uh, the next thing was uh, recognizing three board members, it appears that there is no functioning board for the Maplewood Area Historical Society. That's not accurate. Uh, state statute says we need at least three board members to, to be a functioning 501c3 nonprofit. We have those three um, board members, so that is an inaccurate statement. Okay. And then there was mention of changes to the property, and uh, I guess we have to look at the charter for our commission. Uh, if changes can be made to the property without the uh, Heritage Preservation Commission's approval or the city. So we'll have to take a look at that. And then there were um, questions about renting, renting insurance. If there's a renter insurance there for the, uh, the apartment. Do we have tenant insurance? Is that what you're asking? Yes. Yes. So we have, you know, through Olson Thieland, who acts as our CPA and our advisors on uh, making sure that we are up to code on everything we need. That's been taken care of. That, again, was discussions that were had when you were on the board. Okay. And then there was mention that the renter is not there anymore. Um, we have uh, made the decision to remove the, the current tenant at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't understand what that has to do with <coughs> the, the situation in front of the commission tonight. Well, I think we, um, as I recall, we, we've had a runner there for a long time. We as in the historical society? Yes. Okay. Um, Bob? 
how come the three board members that are left were, I talked to quite a few people, and most of them that are gone were the president, vice president, and publicist or somebody. Okay. Who well, made the decision to let him go? The president is in charge of everything. You are an at-will employee of them. Well, I, I don't want to put them on the spot. You right? can put I me on the spot. Finish. I'm happy to answer these and, questions. And, and also, I want to be careful. I, I, I give, give them some leeway here because it, it, it is a captive audience. But I want to be careful that we're not going beyond sort of the authority of the HPC. Uh, so the Maplewood Historic Preservation Commission, while they're a partner of ours, we don't govern their board. We don't have any authority over their board. If it has to do with the property or things that the city has purview of, I'm happy to entertain that. But if you want to have a conversation at Massa about their issues, I feel a little more comfortable having it at that venue than here. I'm okay. happy to answer any questions. Um, Certainly we're making decisions based on moving the organization forward, which we've seen in the growth of the organization over the last two years. Um, I made no decisions about board members leaving. I don't have that authority. That is not an authority that is vested in an executive director. However, conversations were had where uh, when it became clear that there were uh, conflicts of interest and there were issues at the forefront of detriment to the organization. Conversations were had where um, board members were asked to step down if they felt that they were no longer able to serve or if they had placed the organization in a precarious situation legally or ethically. So those were difficult decisions and discussions that had to be made by multiple people. Okay, let me finish with the comments that were given to me. Uh, so there's rental events, weddings, and the concern about insurance for those events. Is there insurance for the weddings? And in what regard? Uh, they just mentioned that uh, there was a question whether there's yeah. insurance. So every, yes. So we carry insurance. Uh, we carry liability insurance. And then for every non um, Maplewood Historical Society event. Uh, the, any renter of the site needs to get event insurance uh, through an organization called GatherGuard, which we require every non-Maplewood Area Historical Society renter to get. Okay, and then let's see. Uh, so any changes, as I recall when I was on the board there, if we made any changes, we had to report that to the city. I am not aware of how our changes lease, to the to the property to the property or to the buildings the buildings yes Both. so there have yes, been anything. no there have been no changes to the buildings other than the fact that we preserved the the uh, chimney which was falling down and so we uh, had a restoring uh, mason out who worked on tuck pointing and replacing bricks that were falling out of the chimney so we could preserve that otherwise. There have been no um, changes to any of the structures. Okay, so I am just reporting what came to me. That's wonderful. I right. would encourage you to have people reach out to me so okay. that we can, they, they so we probably can address will. it. They probably will. Good. Um, so I would ask you to address that question next month if, if, we, have an exi if we have a functioning board. I'd like you to we, address that. I, I addressed it currently, and that is we do have a functioning board. Okay, so maybe an explanation of why we went from 10 to 3. So this is, a again, as, as Mr. Sharon said, this is not an issue that is related to the um, Maplewood Heritage Preservation Commission. Well, it is because I'm a life member of the Maplewood Area Historical Society. And Yes, I, but we don't, we don't govern their board. I, I, I understand your questions, but our, as a city, we don't, I don't believe we govern their board. Okay. And frankly, to use a position of authority sitting on a commission to ask questions about a separate nonprofit organization. It's just a question, TJ. Well, I've been and a life mentor, member for, I think, 25 years. Correct, correct. And so if these people are, 
if, if I'm the channel for them to ask their questions, that, so be it. So I'll take that. And I appreciate that. I just feel that using the commission as a I'm not. I'm not. But I'm a life member of the so Maple Wood Area Historical not, Society. So if this is not commission business, I, you could have a, a conversation offline. <laughs> you could have a conversation in the lobby. If it's not directly related to our duty as a commission, I okay. feel really uncomfortable. Uh, we appreciate your, your efforts. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else have anything for TJ? Can you just, um, on that August 20th meeting, uh, is it at the farm? It'll be at the, at the museum. And is there a ballpark of time? I mean, is it an evening meeting? It'll be an evening meeting. It's a okay. Sunday meeting. It'll be an evening meeting, yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. We should get on the agenda for your stairway. That would have to be yeah. approved. So. Yep, and we'll take that back to the board to take a look at. So. <clears throat> Um, and then the board will look at it, and then we'll bring it back to the appropriate, appropriate city authorities. Thank you. Yeah, just to clarify, so when you had the work done, did a city inspector go out? Because um, then the city would have known about No, this. because it was restoration work. So it okay. didn't change anything. It was tuck pointing so you're just and re replacing brick. Yeah. So it, it wasn't a, a change to... To my understanding, is a very minor because I know I've had chimney work done on a house, yeah. and it's somebody comes out, removes a couple bricks, puts them right back where they were. Yeah. It's very small. It's not a change of the building. It's putting the building back. It was the way preserving it was the building is what we were doing. Yeah. If it's something that required, to my knowledge, on I don't again, it's not my department, but community development. If it was something that required a permit, an inspector would have to go out and inspect it, and so. If you didn't have to pull a permit, and the contractor should have known whether or not you had to pull a permit, the city <coughs> would have had, had gone out. I would be happy to take any onus should we have misstepped in that. However, I don't believe we have. Okay. I just have one, one other question. I know last year there were several new people running for the board. Is it, is it an open invitation to anyone to run for the board? So currently the way the bylaws are stated, um, it, there is really no process for running for the board, so it's all from the floor. However, uh, if you recall from the last uh, annual meeting, a new set of bylaws will be presented to the membership to vote on. That new set of bylaws will look at uh, moving us towards best practices for museums and nonprofits, which would be to present a slate uh, for election of the board. Okay, so that is an open invitation for any, any uh, members to throw their hat in the ring. Currently, uh, according to the current bylaws, yes. But if those bylaws change, that would, that would change as well. But it, the way I take it, they can't change the bylaws until they have an annual meeting where all the members vote. As Period. I just said, yes. So you will be receiving those bylaws and we will vote on them at the annual meeting. Correct. So then um, kind of a um, common question was, do we have a museum or do we have a historical society? So um, if we're looking at what the uh, organization is, uh, a museum has a physical plant so we have a physical facility. A historical society generally doesn't. A museum would be a collecting um, organization. So our name is a historical society. The Minnesota Historical Society is also the name of the Minnesota Historical Society, but I think many of us look at the History Center as a museum. Uh, so you know, it's, a, it's, it's two things. We are certainly a museum, though. Uh, we are not just a historical society. Just a historical society is generally considered a group of people who would get together to discuss and uh, talk about history, perhaps publish history. That is what a historical society generally is. But with the uh, presence of a physical plant and a collection of 150,000 pieces in our collection, that definitely moves us into museum status. OK, anything else for TJ? Uh, Bob, the other thing is he calls himself the historical society, the society also is supposed to somewhat oversee Gladstone Savannah, the cemetery, Fish Creek, 
and all he's doing is up I, there. I would I would double check. I want to double check that because the city, That's how we the commission, the commission would oversee that, not the historical oh. society. They're just I believe they're just in charge of the barn. I could double check with oh. our city, um, with our community development office. They would to see if see what chart it's not in our charter what they could oversee but i would believe you know as the hpc and those being protected properties by the hpc it's something that either the h it's something the hpc would see oversee not necessarily but i could double check and make sure that's the case because i know this has come up a couple of times and i want to make sure we're on solid ground okay, okay. Well, Maybe we should call Pete up. He knows. So I just want to thank you for everything you're doing for the Maplewood Air Historical Society. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Is there anything further? Overall, I just want to give the uh, commission a heads up. i just realizing it now. I will be out of town for our next meeting, August 10th. And I would ask, I don't have anything, unless there's anything pressing on the agenda, I would say we meet again in the beginning of September. Okay, uh, any comments? Anyone, David? I would love to make a motion that we um, bypass next month's meeting and go to the September meeting. Okay. Question, Judge Steer, you are. When do you want to build it? Because if we have to approve it, do you want to wait till September? Do I um, we can wait, yes, we can wait on that. What? We'll wait. Okay. We'll wait. Okay, can we take that as a motion? Yeah. yeah. That wonderful button. Yes, I would like to make a motion that we meet again in September. Okay, is there a, is a second? Uh, a I'll have second. a question on that. When is the, that uh, conference down in Mankato? The Mankato Say conference is September 27th through the 29th. Okay, so it wouldn't interfere with our... Because that's what usually happens. They're about the same week as our meeting. Okay, so um, a motion and a second to uh, cancel our August 10th meeting. How do we vote? I vote to cancel. David? Aye. 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 John? I will say aye unless something comes up. Okay, all in favor, aye. Like, uh, All right. Monastery uh, did, did, we should Emergency meeting, we can have emergency it. meeting. Okay, um, Joe, could you tell uh, Laura that that meeting's canceled? Yes. Appreciate it. Anything further? We have a guest, Please. would you like to address? Uh, as long as I'm here, I gotta say something, right? Okay, <laughs> could, you, uh, uh, could you tell us your name? Yes, Pete Belay, 1100 East County Road C, Maplewood. Um, I uh, got a copy of my book returned to me to pass along to anybody who doesn't have one. So if anybody on the commission doesn't have my book, does anybody want a copy? Yes, sure. no, yes? There go. Don't throw it at me. <laughs> and uh, I'm glad TJ brought up the lily papers and the photographs. Um, I just wanted to make it go on the record. If it wasn't for Sue Springborn, the president of the North St. Paul Historical Society, there would have been none of that. It would all have been destroyed. So all that you'll ever see um, of those with the newspapers, the uh, photographs, is because of Sue. And it was a great um, multi-historical society, including Washington County effort to retrieve them. And a lot, of, a lot of hard work was done to do it. And many thanks goes out to Sue. Uh, out of the photographs, about 10 to 15, maybe 20% are Maplewood. The other 80% are outside the city or in Washington County. So someday we'll learn more about it. Pete, could you spell her last name, Sue's last name? Sure, S-P-R-I-N-G-B-O-R-N, Springborn. S-P-R-I-N-G. B-O-R-N. B-O-R-N, yep. Springborn. And they're doing a lot over there at their museum. They call them, they have a museum too. And uh, um, it's kind of fun to, uh, to see what they're up to too. And they, um, they're, they're on break until the fall, but they'll be back. So. Um, I know a lot of us here may put up ties in North St. Paul, North St. Paul schools and such, so kind of fun to see some things there, too. Thanks for mentioning that, Pete, um, before you leave. Yeah. Uh, I 
got some word that the North St. Paul High School is one of the 13 oldest schools in the, in the state, and that's okay. 1905. Uh, I'd have to look into that. Yeah, it could be. It was. Um, that's, yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of high schools, so I'm not sure. That'd be something to ask the North St. Paul Historical yeah, Society. They no. better have that like that. So, yeah. um, One history project I'm working on, I'm glad you brought that up, is what could have been. Uh, we were very close to having North High School in Maplewood, and actually the school board voted to do it. And guess, can anybody guess where it was going to be? Yeah, the right priority. up here by the golf course. The yep, right by the golf Aldridge. course. They yeah. were going to put, so in a parallel universe, we'd have North High School across uh, Kitty Corner from McKnight and Larpenter. All that would have yep. been the high school. And what a weird world it would have been. And, of course, that wasn't the end of the story. But uh, that, that's, that's kind of a fun little history tidbit, the, the high school battles. Yep. yep. Um, Anyway, that's it. Good to see you, Pete. Yep, good to see Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anything else? We're adjourned.